Hello friends, I'm Dr. Giriraj Sharma and today we will discuss about inhaled nitric oxide in newborn babies. So in coming 15 minutes, we will be discussing inhaled nitric oxide in these points. What is inhaled nitric oxide? What is the mechanism of action? How it acts in the case of the PTHL? What are the indications of the inhaled nitric oxide in an ICU? How to initiate? When to initiate and how to initiate inhaled nitric oxide? When to win and how to win? What are the things we have to monitor during inhaled nitric oxide in a newborn baby? What are the different complications of inhaled nitric oxide? And what is the effect of HFO in inhaled nitric oxide? What combination of INO and HFO? And if we, we should use inhaled nitric oxide in case of CDH. So, these 10 points we will discuss. So, inhaled nitric oxide is a selective pulmonary vasodilator. Why it's selective? Because it does not have any effect on the systemic vascular resistance. It reduces the only the pulmonary vascular resistance, it does not reduce the systemic blood pressure. Okay, that's why you call it selective pulmonary vascular dilator. It is used in case of the hypoxemic respiratory failure and PTHL. So, this is our ion. So, what is the mechanism of action of ion? So, inhaled nitric oxide stimulates, activates the guanine cyclase. Okay. So, it activates the guanine cyclase enzyme. This will increase the production of the CGMP. CGMP what will do? It will cause efflux of the calcium from the smooth muscles. Efflux of the calcium of, from the smooth muscles that will cause relaxation of the smooth muscles, vascular smooth muscles relaxation. That will cause vasodilation of the pulmonary capillaries. So, it will cause vasodilation that will reduce the pulmonary vascular resistance. So, this is the mechanism of action of the inhaled nitric oxide. Now, coming to the how it acts in the case of the PPHN. So, PPHN is a different lecture, but here briefly we will discuss what happens in PPHN. So, PPHN, what is happening that pulmonary pressures are not reducing, pulmonary pressures are persistently high, that's why there is the shunting in the PFO, right to left shunting, and PDA right to left shunting is there okay, because pulmonary pressures are high, right side pressures are high that's why there is shunting from right to left, from right to left in PFO and PDA. Okay. This is the goal, the extra pulmonary shunting that is happening in the PPH. Indeed. Another thing is PPH is what is happening, intrapulmonary shunting means pulmonary vascular resistance is high, that's why here ventilation is there but perfusion is not there. So, here gas exchange is not happening. So, dead space ventilation is happening. So, this is called intrapulmonary shunting. So, in PPHN cases, two things are happening. Extrapulmonary shunting and intrapulmonary shunting. So, how does this inhaled nitric oxide acts in case of PPHN? So, this inhaled nitric oxide, what it will do? It will reduce the pulmonary vascular resistance. This pulmonary vascular resistance will be reduced. So, right side pressures are reduced. So, it will reduce the shunting right to left shunting because here right side pressures were high, that's why shunting was happening. Now, because of INO, these pressures are reduced, that's why this shunting will be reduced. And this shunting is reduced, that's why hypoxemia will be reduced. Because um, what, why hypoxemia was there? Because of this right to left shunting, deoxygenated blood was going in systemic circulation, but because of INO, these pressures are reduced, that's why shunting is reduced. So, oxygenation will improve. So, one thing is this. Second thing, INO will what will go? INO will go to alveoli. It will cause pulmonary capillaries dilatation. So here these pulmonary capillaries will be dilated. So perfusion will improve. So here gas exchange will improve. Previously there was no perfusion, but because of INO perfusion improved. So here gas exchange improves. So this is it improves the VQ mismatch also. Here VQ mismatch was there. So, that is improved after INO. So, two mechanisms in the case of PPHN. One is reducing the PVR and then again is reducing the VQ mismatch or improving the VQ mismatch. So, this is the mechanism in PPHN. 
Now coming to the indications of the INO. When to start INO, in which way which we should start. So INO is indicated only that in, in term babies or late preterm babies. Term and late preterm means more than 34 weaker babies it is recommended. So INO is not recommended for preterm babies. FDA is approved in term and late preterm babies only. Second, it is used mostly in first week of life. It is used in first week of life only mostly. And in cases of the hypoxemic respiratory failure and eco proven PPHL. Okay. Uh, hypoxemic respiratory failure and eco proven PPHL. It is used. So these are the indications. Starting, we should rule out LV dysfunction. LV dysfunction should be ruled out. Any that dependent systemic circulation CHDs should be ruled out and TAPVs. These CSDs should be ruled out and LV dysfunction should be ruled out before starting IM. So what is the indication? Hypoxemic respiratory failure and PPHL and these things should be ruled out by ECO and term and lectricum babies. Now coming to the initiation, when to initiate INO and how to initiate. So there is 20, 20, 20 formula is there for initiation of inhaled nitric oxide. What is this 20, 20? So first 20 is we have to initiate INO when oxygenation index is more than 20. So when OI is more than 20, that is the indication of INO. Second, we should start at 20 ppm, 20 parts per million dose of INO. And when we call it responders, when PAO2 should improve by more than 20 mm of Hg. So we should start by when OI is more than 20, we should start by 20 ppm of dose and PAO2 should improve by 20 mm of Hg. That is the responder. So this is the 20-20-20 rule for initiation of inhaled nitric oxide. Second, when to win, how to win. So for weaning 60 60 60 rule is there so first we should wean the FiO2 and come down up to the 60 percent when FiO2 has come down up to the 60 percent then only we should start weaning inhaled nitric oxide so first 60 is FiO2 60 percent so after weaning FiO2 60 percent PaO2 should be maintained above 60 for 60 minutes, at least 60 minutes. So FiO2 has come to, down to 60%, still PO2 is maintained more than 60 for 60 minutes. Then only we should start weaning inhaled nitric oxide. Okay. And now how to wean inhaled nitric oxide? So inhaled nitric oxide is weaned slowly, 5 ppm every 4 hours. Okay, so 5 ppm we are reducing every 4 hourly up to the 5 ppm. Okay, up to 5 ppm, up to we reach inhaled nitric oxide 5 ppm every 4 hourly we are reducing. After reaching 5 ppm, we are reducing by 1 ppm every 4 to 6 hourly. So this 5 ppm will reduce over 24 hours. So we are going slowly. Because there is risk of rebound hypertension is there. So sometimes what happen if we stop abruptly, so there will be risk of rebound hypertension. To prevent that, we are weaning slowly, 5 ppm for hourly. After reaching 5 ppm, then 1 ppm for to 6 hourly, and over 24 hours we'll wean this. So what are the things we have to monitor during inhaled nitric oxide? First is we have to monitor PaO2. So we have to do frequent blood gases to look for PaO2 is improving or not. For OI we can calculate by PaO2 that we have already discussed. So OI is reducing or not that we have to monitor. One more thing is methemoglobin. So methemoglobin is very important in case of INO. So first methemoglobin we have to do after we starting Four hours after starting INO. So first is we are doing after four hours of starting INO, and then every 24 hours we should do methemoglobin levels. Okay, so oximetry method by oximetry method we should do methemoglobin every 24 hours. 
Then inhaled nitric oxide causes platelet dysfunction and platelet inhibits the aggregation of the plates. So platelet counts also we should monitor, we should maintain more than at least 50,000. And then nit nitrous oxide also, nitrogen dioxide also we should monitor. That will be shown on the screen of the machine. Okay. So this also we should monitor. So PO2, OI, methemoglobin, platelets, and all these things we should monitor. So coming to complications of inhaled nitric oxide, first is methemoglobinemia. So nitric oxide causes oxidation of hemoglobin and converts into methemoglobin. So sometimes if we are giving higher dose of nitric oxide, sometimes in 40 to 80, there will be higher risk of causing methemoglobin. So what are the normal levels? Up to 3 is normal. Up to 3, 3% of methemoglobin is normal. 3.3 to 5 also we should be cautious. If it is going more than 5, then we should reduce the dose of INO. If it is going more than 10%, then we should stop the INO. Actually, methemoglobin is not directly toxic, but it reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Because now oxygen, the hemoglobin available for oxygen, it reduces. So oxygen carrying capacity is reduced. That's why we should monitor methemoglobin. Second is the Nitrogen dioxide. That also is we should monitor. Up to three is normal. Three to five is higher on more than five. We should reduce the INO. More than ten, we should stop the INO. That is the for nitrogen dioxide. So these are two complications. Third is platelet dysfunction or inhibition of the platelet aggregation. So should, we should many monitor the platelets. Sometimes it can cause bleeding also. Sometimes it where these platelets is low or bleeding is there, so we should not start INO also. Okay, so these are the complications of the inhaled nitric oxide. So, what are the contraindications of inhaled nitric oxide in newborn babies? So, before we starting inhaled nitric oxide, we should do eco and we should rule out these things because these are the contraindications of inhaled nitric oxide. First is LV dysfunction, second is TAPLC. Third is duct dependent systemic circulation congenital heart disease. So, what is happening? Here we can understand that if LV dysfunction is there, so there will be back pressure and pulmonary venous hypertension will be there. Okay. If you are giving INO, so here that pulmonary vascular resistance is reduced, so this pulmonary venous hypertension will be worsened, CCF will be worsened. Okay, so because of LV dysfunction, pulmonary venous hypertension and CCL of what is happening. Now you are reducing the pulmonary vascular resistance further. So it will worsen the CCF. So if there is any LV dysfunction, we should not start the INO. First correct the LV dysfunction, then only we should start INO. So LV dysfunction is a contraindication for INO. Second is duct dependent systemic circulation. So what are the duct dependent systemic circulations? So like uh, left hypoplastic, left heart syndrome, aortic stenosis, interrupted aortic arch, and aortic coaptation of aorta. So these are the things, these are the CSDs, which are duct dependent systemic circulation. So what is happening here? Here is aortic stenosis, left hypoplastic left heart syndrome, coaptation of aorta. Here, PDA is supplying the systemic circulation we, through the PDA. Through the PDA, systemic circulation is maintained. So, systemic circulation is maintained because pulmonary pressures are higher here. So, there is right to left trend or this is going in the systemic circulation. But if we are starting INO, that will reduce the PVR. This, this side pressures are reduced. So this shunting also will be reduced. So systemic perfusion also will be reduced because this pressure is reduced. So this shunting is reduced. So systemic flow also will be reduced. So systemic perfusion will be reduced. Baby will collapse. Okay. So in cases of the duct dependent systemic circulation, INO is contraindicated. Third is the TAPC. TAPC also INO is contraindicated because it will increase the it will reduce the systemic circulation and it will increase the pulmonary venous hypertension. So, if we are using INO, so better to use with HFO. Why this? 
because HFO will recruit the lungs. So there will be synergistic effect of HFO and INO because it will reduce the intrapulmonary shunting. So previously this alveoli is what collapsed. So alveoli are collapsed, there is no INO in this alveoli, there will be no effect on the pulmonary vasculature. But because of now HFO, alveoli are recruited, INO is there, INO will go to the pulmonary vasculature, it will dilate the pulmonary capillaries and it will improve the VQ mismatch. So HFO will recruit the lungs that will facilitate the delivery of INO in the alveoli and it will improve the VQ mismatch. So HFO and INO has synergistic effect. So before starting INO, we should recruit the lungs. If your external lungs are not recruited, INO will not be effective. So better first recruit the lung, then only start INO. Then coming to CDH, shall we start, should we start the INO in cases of CDH? So CDH what's happening, there is component of the pulmonary hypoplasia and vascular anomalies, vascular developmental abnormalities are there, LV dysfunction is there. So because of these, these INO is not effective in cases of CDS. Sometimes we can use if lungs are properly recruited, there is no LV dysfunction, then we can use, but studies have shown that INO is not much effective in cases of the CDS. So this we have discussed today all about INO. We have discussed mostly the practical points. We did not go in more the theoretical details. Thank you so much.